16-3 to 21 in favor of the Raiders. But what's funny is, you know, Easton Stick, he comes in, he puts in a, not a decent game, but he gets three touchdowns, which, you know, could have probably won him any other game but this one. Uh, he has 23 completion, 32 attempts, 257 yards, three touchdowns, a interception, which, unfortunately for him, is a pick six. He also gets sacked and gets a fumble return touchdown against him as well, which should probably count there. What's funny is Easton Stick throws a pick six. He gets sacked for the fumble, which turns into a touchdown, and gets blown out by 42 points, and he puts up a QB rating of 113.7, which is higher than many winning quarterbacks this week. Aiden O'Connell goes 20 for 34, 248 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. And, yeah, man, I, uh, I picked the Raiders to win, but I did not see this happening after what mm -hmm. happened, um, after what happened to them last week. I did not see them mm -hmm. just coming out here like this. I don't, if you, if you predicted the Raiders blowing them out by 40, I'm gonna call you a liar. I'm gonna say you're a liar. Or, you have the script. Vikings versus Bengals. Vikings versus Bengals. I picked the Bengals here. Um, my thinking was with them only winning by three, you know, that three to nothing game last week against the Raiders, um, I wasn't too confident. I wasn't too confident in them, and I thought Browning looked pretty good last week. Um, this game was a lot closer than I thought it was. You had Nick Mullins in there at QB um, instead of oh, I can't think of that guy's name. Oh, I can't think of his name. Dobbs instead of Dobbs. You had Nick Mullins in at QB. And this game was close. It ended up going to overtime, but a field goal in overtime wins it for the Bengals 27 to 24. The Vikings are back to 500. They're 7 7 0. They're second in the NFC North. But the Bengals, they are 8 6 0. They're third in the AFC North. Nick Mullins, 26 or 33, 303 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Jake Browning, 29 for 42, 324 yards, two touchdowns, and a single, a single interception. Steelers versus Colts. I predicted the Colts here. And they do get the win. Now, didn't somebody get suspended after this game? Was that a Steelers player who got suspended after this game? Hold on, I need to check something. Oh, I think it's somebody else. Yeah, DeMonte Gazi got suspended for the rest of the season for repeated violations of unnecessary roughness. That's... can't be doing that. It says it right in the name of the penalty that it's unnecessary, but... Um, yeah, the, the Colts win this one 30 to 13. Trubisky kind of goes off a little bit to start. And it just falls off a cliff. He starts the game with a rushing touchdown. Which, funny enough, he fumbles it. <laughs> but it ends up being a touchdown anyway. Um, but after that, it's all Colts. From about the middle of the second quarter till the end of the game, it's just Colts, 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 Colts. Um, Trubisky goes 16 for 2,369 yards. A touchdown, two picks. Minshew... Has an, a fantastic game. Oh my gosh, 18 for 28, 215 yards, three touchdowns, not a single interception for him, 13 for 30. Hold on, what are they? Colts, they, Colts are 8-6-0, they're second in the AFC 
see south, but if we look at those standings, uh, AFC South, there they died at the top. They are yet. Ooh, Jags, Colts, Texans, all eight six and zero. Oh, but the Jags lost this week. I think the Texans lost this week too. I don't know exactly, but that's going to be a photo finish. Broncos versus Lions. I predicted the Broncos there because I haven't been super satisfied with the way the Lions been playing lately, particularly Jared Goff. I thought he had looked great the last couple of weeks. But I take my first L of the video here, first of many, I imagine, kind of giving a quick glance at the outcomes of these games. Um, yeah, Broncos, they've definitely slowed down a little bit both last week and then this week, and they're looking a little bit on shaky ground, but this game is a total blow to the Lions, 42-17 to in their favor. Um, and this was another game that I felt was like over uh, pretty early, because this is pretty much all Lions early. I took a couple notes on this game. I didn't watch the whole thing, but Amon Ra had this fantastic, um, he broke this tackle at a great first drive. Uh, I thought Judy played really well this game. The first three possessions were Lions all ended in punts, and like early on, both offenses I thought looked really ugly, but then Amon Ra St. Brown had this amazing passing touchdown where he front flipped into the end zone. Um, at that point, I was like, all right, this game's going to be all Lions. I didn't really take too many notes on this game, but Wilson goes 18 over 32, 223 yards, a touchdown, and not a single interception. Jared Goff, meanwhile, just absolutely shows out. 24 for 34, 278 yards, five touchdowns. Five of them things, a single interception. Um... Russell Wilson also had a rushing touchdown, but Sam Laporta, Sam Laporta was a beast, five receptions for 56 yards and three touchdowns, like, dude got the ball five times, got 21 points, that's absolutely insane. Chiefs, Patriots, Chiefs, Patriots, I didn't watch this one, no, I thought I might if I didn't this one, um, because I felt like this one, I didn't feel like this one was going to be close whatsoever, for being honest, I picked the Chiefs to win, yeah, um, especially because there's been some sort of rumors with Belichick leaving and stuff like that at the end of the season, who knows if that's true or whatever, but I thought this would be a pretty easy one for the Chiefs, even with Bailey Zapp being there, you know, whatever that's worth, uh, and I ended up being right, they win it by 10, this game is a perfect illustration of how crazy the Vegas line makers are. The line for this game was 9.5 points in favor of Kansas City. They won by 10. The over-under on this game was 39.5 points. The final score was 44 total points. Like, this thing was super close to the margins. This probably busted a ton of parlays. You know, Vegas got a lot of money on this game, I'll tell you that right now. Um, Mahomes, 27 for 37, 305 yards, two touchdowns, but also two interceptions, and it has to be said, um, Mahomes has been throwing a lot of picks this year compared to what he usually does. Um, let me see if I can find... So this year, so far, he has thrown 25 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Um, let's see, how do I see? Last year, he had 12 interceptions all season. Last year, uh, 2021, he had 13 interceptions all season. 2020, he had 6 interceptions all season. 2019, he had 5 interceptions all season. So, like, 
you know, he's already passed last year's total in fewer games, three fewer games. You know, year over year, his, his interceptions are going up and up, and I feel like it has to be a little bit of a concern at this point. Like, they're still winning, but I don't know, maybe some bad habits coming in there. Uh, Bailey Zappi, 23 completions on 31 attempts, 180 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. But I think, you know, the, the most memorable thing about this game is the Travis Kelsey flop in the end zone. That's going to be the lasting legacy of this game. Uh, we come to the Jets game. This was my upset pick of the week. I picked the Jets to win. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't really impressed with the Dolphins um, last week, especially on offense. And I think the week before, I thought the Dolphins looked a little bit shaky as well. And the Jets did impress me last week. I don't think I realized that Trevor Simeon was going to be the quarterback for the Jets. I thought it was going to be Zach Wilson. Did Zach Wilson leave this game injured or something? Um, hold on, I just dropped my pencil. Okay, so um, I see that Zach Wilson took a big sack and just before halftime and then he ended up leaving with a concussion. Uh, which, you know, you're Zach Wilson, you know you're not going to be on this team next year. I don't think he's going to play again. I have to imagine, like, he needs not, like, because if he gets seriously injured when it doesn't matter, the Jets are eliminated from playoff contention. He needs to save his body because he isn't, like, you know, we know he's not staying with that team. He's going to go somewhere else. Yeah, it's, we did play, um, he got injured, um, what were his stats? I mean, he can't have been great, but, four completions on 11 attempts, 26 yards, zero touchdowns, zero picks, Simeon has 14 for 26, 110 yards, zero touchdowns, two picks, Tua goes 21 for 24, 224 yards, a touchdown, no picks. This game was almost dirty. He had two touchdowns on 42 yards, 15 carries. Like, very um, efficient game there for most. It didn't take a lot for the Dolphins to beat the Jets there. But I take my second L this week. But I knew that was an upset pick going into it. It was just... Uh, yeah, they're only a seven and a half point favorite, to be fair. Bears versus Browns. I picked the Browns to win this one. Um, even though the uh, you know, the Bears did impress me with that win um, last week, the Browns also looked good. Joe Flacco looked good. Plus, they have that amazing defense. They almost didn't win this Joe Flacco. Maybe reminded you of why he hasn't been in the league for a little while. He threw three interceptions this game. You know, Flacco, he, that ball's either getting caught or it's an interception. There's no, he ain't throwing no check downs. He's, you know, that's, that's Flacco ball. Um, but yeah, this game was a lot closer than I expected. Uh, 20 to 17 in favor of the Browns. Fields has 19 completions on 40 attempts, 166 yards, a touchdown, two picks. Flacco, 28 for 44, 374 yards, two touchdowns, three picks, including a pick six to start the second half, uh, which was an Edmonds 45 yard pick six return. Texans, Titans, the Texans actually did end up winning. I don't know why I thought they lost. Their, another team died for first place. I predicted the Titans on this one, so I got it wrong. Oh well. Yeah, 19 to 16 for the Texans. This went to OT and Keith Keenum was in there for the Texans to win this thing. Uh, Keith Keenum had 23 for 36, 229 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Um, and one of those interceptions was a 
six. Well, not one of his only interception was a pick six. I cannot get rid of this fly for the life of me. I don't know. I tried to pause to go find it in like some shit, but then like it's hiding. Very annoying. And Will Levis, 17 or 26, 199 yards, uh, is a rushing touchdown, but no passing and a single interception. <laughs> that this game went to overtime is crazy. Because they have the. They didn't score after the 14 minute mark of the second quarter, the Titans. And yet this game still went to OT. Giants, Saints, I predicted Giants here. I believed in the power of Tommy Cutlets, but I think he actually ended up getting hurt this game. Did he? Tommy DeVito. So I don't know why I thought Tommy DeVito was injured. I just like looked all over the place and I couldn't find anything about it. Um, but regardless, Giants got blown out here by the Saints, uh, 24 to six in favor of the Saints. The, the hype train for DeVito has gone off the rail a little bit. Saints are now seven seven zero. Um, the Giants who were kind of Looking at that wild card spot, maybe not so much now at this point. DeVito goes 20 for 34, 177 yards, zero touchdowns, zero picks. Carr, 23 for 28, 218 yards, three touchdowns, zero picks. Now, this was the pick I was most happy about getting right this week. Falcons versus Panthers. I predicted the Panthers. I was saying there's no way that the Panthers end the season with only one win. They have to at least get two. And the Falcons have been so lackadaisical recently. I was like, you know what? They could get it here. And this is my second time now, I believe, this season predicting the second win for the Panthers. Didn't go well last time, obviously. But this week, we get it right. And they beat the Atlanta Falcons without throwing a single touchdown. And this game, tickets were like less than a dollar. Nobody showed up to this game. The weather was terrible. Nobody saw the second victory of Bryce Young's football career. And he didn't throw a single touchdown. The team did not get a single touchdown. It was all field goals that won them this game. One of them literally in the final second of this game, 9-7 to is your final score. Desmond Ritter goes 12 for 20, 152 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Bryce Young, 18 for 24, 167 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Bucks uh, Packers, I almost said Panthers. Bucks Packers, I predicted the Packers here. Um, the Buccaneers did something. Nick Baker Mayfield did something that nobody has ever done before this game. Baker Mayfield is the first quarterback in NFL history to go into Lambeau Field as an opposing quarterback and have a perfect quarterback rating. Baker Mayfield had easily the best game of his career here. I didn't think, I mean, Green Bay was a three and a half point favorite here. I, I didn't think the Buccaneers had it in them, but lead the NFC South. They're 7-7. Seven, seven. They blew out the Packers by 14. Baker Mayfield did something no quarterback's ever done before. Not Tom Brady. Not Aaron Rodgers. Not, you know, insert amazing quarterback here. Not Peyton. Not any of those guys. 22 for 28. Baker Mayfield was 381 yards. Four touchdowns. Zero picks, of course. Jordan Love doesn't have a bad game any other night. He might have won this one. 29 for 39. 284 yards, two touchdowns. Not a single pick. Niners versus Cardinals. This was an easy Niners prediction on my behalf. And it 
was an easy win on their behalf. Um, easily top of the power rankings now, especially after some of these other performances this week. I'm still iffy because the whole like three straight losses thing, I was like very iffy on that. But now another team has had three straight losses that looked like a Super Bowl lock, so like. This just goes back to there being so much bad football this season, you know, like even the good teams are mediocre. But the Niners win this one 45 to 29 against the Cardinals. Obviously the Cardinals did better than I thought they would. They were leading this game uh, for a little bit. Um, but they had those that Murray pick six early on. That kind of just eh at that point, you know. Um, Purdy 16 for 25, 242 yards, four touchdowns, not a single pick. Kyler Murray 26 for 39, 211 yards, one touchdown, two picks. All the games I watched, like all literally came right here at the end, didn't they? Because I got, yeah, Cowboys, Bills, Ravens, Jags, Seahawks, Eagles, and those are the final games. Commanders, Rams, I predicted the Rams here. They end up winning this one by 8, 28 to 20. Jacoby Brissett in under center for the Commanders. Only got 10 passing attempts this game, which is brutal, but he connected on 8 of them. 124 yards, 2 touchdowns, 0 picks. Man, he had 2 touchdowns on 124 yards and 8 completed passes. That's <laughs> actually crazy efficiency, bro. That's crazy. Stafford, 25 for 30. 15 yards, two touchdowns, zero picks. Rams are 7 7 and 0. Commanders are 4 10 and 0. But even then, they were not the first team eliminated. That was the Jets. Alright, finally, we get to a game that I watched Cowboys versus Bills. No, I did predict the Cowboys here. They've been on an absolute roll. These last few weeks, they've looked like one of the best teams in the league. Then they came out this game and Dak Prescott, especially. Let's talk about it. Bills start with the ball. Buffalo's opening drives absolutely electric. Lots of great plays being made through the air and on the ground. And then Murray gets in for the touchdown. Buffalo scores to open the game. So let's see how Dallas responds. Spoiler alert: they don't respond well. Dak gets sacked on third and fourteen, forced the punt for Dallas. Bills defense steps up, dominates the Cowboys early. Bills offense goes three now the subsequent drive. They try to see if Dallas can capitalize here, but they don't. They go three and out. And then the Bills tack on a second touchdown to start a second quarter. Dalvin Cook said the Cowboys are completely discombobulated. Dallas marches down to the goal line. Dak's almost intercepted on third down. They're forced to kick the field goal. Then it's Josh Allen, full steam ahead for the one-yard rushing touchdown. I almost got it. This, this fly is going to be the death of me. The Bills go up 18 just before halftime. Dallas can't answer before the half. They have a lot of ground to make up in the second half. Start of the second half, Dallas finds themselves on third and one. Dak takes a huge sack. Dallas offense has not looked any better to start the second half. I said Bills respond. They attack on a field goal. But then Dak gets sacked on third and nine to force yet another punt. And I said the Bills have completely shut down Dallas's offense. And the Cowboys offensive line is just getting run through all night long. And then the Bills immediately come back. James Cook powers in for a touchdown. Bills go up 28 with 12 minutes left. What a game for the Bills. Cowboys were absolutely dominated. And where were the Cowboys of the last few weeks, like, that team, they had, like, a completely different team out there, it's actually really shocking, really alarming, I was kind of like, what the hell am I even watching right now, because, yeah, like, th this game really took me by surprise, I, the Bills looked a lot better than I expected, and the Cowboys looked far, far, far worse than I had anticipated, um, Dak Prescott especially, but the whole offense just looked slow, unprepared. just rough. I keep having to pause when it starts raining again. It's taking me a lot longer to record this video than I was anticipating. Um, so we'll just talk about this. 
Tech goes to 134 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. Josh Allen, 7 for 15, 94 yards. One passing, one rushing touchdown, zero interceptions. I didn't realize they ran it that much. Buffalo with 266 rushing yards, only 85 passing yards. Which is crazy because Josh Allen usually likes to air it out, which is something that usually gets him into trouble. Ravens, Jags. Um, final score here is 23 to 7. I did predict the Ravens to win that. So that is good. Does he's good? Jackson for 14 for 24 hours, having yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Trevor Lawrence 25 for 43, 264 yards, a touchdown, and no picks. 23 7 in favor of the Ravens. Finally, the game of the week for me. I don't even care that I got it wrong because I predicted the Eagles to win it. The Seahawks finally get a win, and it's with Drew Locke starting at quarterback. to be happy about this season as a Seahawks fan, but here's my notes on the game. Eagles start the ball. Seahawks defense, they won't do anything to stop the Eagles offense to start on the opening drive. Hurts keeps the ball, rush ahead for the first touchdown of the game. Seahawks respond by going three and out. I said this might be an early night. Little did I know. Me of little faith. Seahawks finally stop at third down conversion on the next drive after a four straight, but then they go three and out as well. Eagles next drive ends in a field goal to go up 10-0. Third and 10, Lock steps back, get the ball to Jackson, Smith, and Jigba to get the first down at the doorstep. Fourth and four, Seattle decides to go for it, but not actually. They just try to get the Eagles to go offside, which is the only thing Beat ever does when he says he's going for it on fourth down, so teams don't even try anymore. They know they're going to run anything very frustrating. And so, field goal unit comes in, 10-3. Eagles go three and out. Seahawks have one more chance to score before half. But instead, Drew Lock gets intentional grounding. We go into halftime, 10-3, in favor of the Eagles. The Seahawks get the ball to start the second. Kenneth Walker breaks off a massive 23-yard run and gets the touchdown for the Seahawks. Game is tied. Eagles come down the next drive. They immediately respond with a touchdown of their own. 12 plays, 75 yards. Then a one yard rushing touchdown for Hertz. The next drive for Seattle, complete disaster. Lock gets blown up on third down, forces a punt. Fourth and two, Seattle goes for it. B.I. gets drawn by Metcalf. Third down, there's a huge sack on Lock. Fourth to nine, Seattle settles for a field goal. The next drive, Jalen Hurts throws deep down the end zone, but it gets picked off by Julian Love. But then Seattle gets the ball right back with a punt. Third and seven, Love drops back. He's pressured. He scrambles incomplete. Seattle gets the ball back. Two minutes left in the game. But then Metcalf, he just has a massive, massive presence. This final drive, he gets a 30-yard drive. He gets not 30 yard, but he gets a huge reception, but Seattle on the 30 yard line. He was just making so many plays, making clutch catches on 50 50 balls. And then Jackson Smith in the jig, but gets the touchdown. Seattle takes the lead with 28 seconds left. I wasn't celebrating as I heard still last time. And he goes deep down for the end zone, but he's picked off a second time in this game by Julian Love. Whose legs only stay in bound thanks to another defender, like another Seahawks player, to like if he kicks on the way down. And we beat the Eagles. We beat the Eagles. And I was so hype. Because Seattle had lost like three or four straight at that point. But Seattle's now 7-7, seven and seven, same exact record as the Rams. And who does Seattle have on the schedule? Seattle 
Dallas, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, Arizona. Those all feel winnable. I'm not saying they're going to be wins, but they're winnable. And the Eagles now are 10-4-0, and they are second in the NFC East, which is crazy. They've dropped down to second. They've lost three straight games. And the Cowboys now have the one seed. Um, so even though the Cowboys lost, the Eagles also lost the Cowboys with the one seed. These are going to be interesting. The Eagles, listen, I've been, I've been saying that I have concerns about the Eagles all season long. But they were just winning, so nobody took it seriously. But now it looks like there's some no actual issues going on. They've lost three straight games. Um, and you know, I feel great for Drew Locke. Jalen Hurts is tied for the most turnovers in the NFL this season. He has 17. That's crazy. But yeah. Like, dude, the, the, the ball security, the decision making from Jalen Hurts this season has, I've pointed so many times and that shows it right there the most turnovers in the league anyway the 16 games this week I got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them correct 9 of the 16 so just over 15% there let's see 9 divided by 16 so we're at 56% So we're going to be 133 uh, 218 224 133 divided by 224 Almost dropped my phone there We drop a percentage point Unfortunately we're back down to 59% Hopefully next week we can bump that up back to 60 But we'll have to see see where I'm going with that, but um, I'm sorry if this was a little jumpy, I had to keep pausing for the rain, and then the you know, there was so much stuff going on, um, anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day, and until next time, guys.